Spoilers for Xenoblade 1, 2, 3 and X or Cross. Also, expect lots of low res images and bad editing due to an experience. That being said, let's press on. I've been meaning to make this video for a while now. Xenoblade X canon? More likely than you think. It is unequivocal fact. It's just not. Denying it is self-delusion. Quite simple actually. Basically. This particular game has always been considered the odd one out within the Xenoblade Chronicles series. Many consider it to be some sort of spin-off more than a sequel in the continuity of the franchise. Seeing the significant references to previous games as mere easter eggs. Well, thanks to the release My of Xenoblade 3, our hopes as Xenoblade X fans were reignited ever since the first trailers. As lots of small details gave us the impression of Xenoblade X concepts being used, especially the Euroboros form, and after playing the game for almost 300 hours, that feeling has only grown stronger especially with the hype surrounding the upcoming DLC that was hinted to give us clues on the future of the series. Today, I would like to discuss some theories that have surged while playing the game and multiple Discord debates with other crazy X fans. If I get something right, yay! If not, this was all just an elaborated joke, don't laugh. So, without further ado, I'll quickly summarize the points to be made in this video. Mostly made in slides, but think of it as a Xenogears reference and not a budget and skill limitation, please. Summary The ingredients needed for this theory include a pinch of Xenoblade references in Xenoblade X, then some Ares scale and Euroverse comparisons. Following this, we'll need a big spoon of Orion and Ghost. After that, add some Oblivia Ring Talk to taste and a general evolution of the world plus biome similarities. And to spice it all up, massive amounts of coke. Let's start where the current series began. Xenoblade Chronicles 2010. Not counting Xenogears, which has lots of references in Xenoblade 3. A story for another day. Let's start with the big one. The great one. Appears in the main story, saving the party, and is fought in some affinity quests. According to L, and is said to cull the impure. At the Lethia, the biggest one we've seen so far, and with a description which fits the one given by Dorothea, that which eliminates impure life. We know that there are Telethias left in the Xenoblade 1 universe pre Ionios and they should be there after Ionios, unless they all explode. Furthermore, in a side quest involving an unfortunate Orpheon, it mentions how there is something nostalgic about the creature in relation to them and the Ova, and states seeing an endless sea. The world was nothing more than an endless sea. If we choose the right option. We can also find many collectibles that refer to this universe, such as a wooden carving which clearly resembles the Bionis and Mekonis, described as locked in combat. The Titans were locked in a timeless battle. Similar to what Shulk narrates at the beginning of Xenoblade 1, we have the Lost Memory Synthesizer, a gem crafting machine in a time where gems no longer exist. And the Book of Death and River, either a Sansa or the Blades and Titan Cycle reference, depicting illustrations of giants, we don't know if two or more, and that it somehow feels nostalgic. Additionally, Tatsu, a no pun, mentions the legendary Frontier Village, bigger than even legendary Frontier Village big, and the term Hom Hom. Mean friends get to make more Hom Hom, Tatsu gladly approves. What does he know? And while on the topic, Lopons are in this game, and they state they've always been native to Mira.
what caught our attention the most during the second trailer of Xenoblade 3 were the Euroworks, the interlinked forms, which reminded us of the original Ares from Xenoblade X, which is not just a new concept art as it appears briefly during the opening of the game. Purple mech-like body with transparent sections that contain some sort of orange core, pointy shoulders and hips like the Eurowars forms of Lance and Noah, but similarities do not end there, as the concept art give us more details, such as how humans built an armor for them to use it, requiring two pilots for it to work properly, the lone hero in this case, and a partner heavily implied to be Elma during her affinity mission and other interactions. Come to think of it, that was a tandem skull, wasn't it? Weren't you with... Uh... Hmm? Oh, uh, that. If you want to know a person's past, give them cause to tell you about it. Elma will tell us about it when she's good and ready. Isn't she saying she was going to tell us the rest of what she knows? Hey, that's right. I got so excited I almost forgot. Also, the concept art describes something about a heat state or burn state, reminiscent of the overheat state of Euroboros, and that it's made out of something akin to charcoal. Let's not forget that Elma went to Earth to warn them about the upcoming threat, bringing with her scale technology and more, such as the Trion Barrier. A Trion Barrier? A Trion Barrier? Those scales of there. How did a primitive race like theirs manage to piece those together? So as to teach and prepare humans. So, if she broke the scale technology, it may have been the Ares scale. Furthermore, it shares some similarities with Xenoblade 3's party interlink forms, further establishing that the Ares is based on interlink technology. Having Mia's and Senna's roller skated movement summoning a sword like Noah's, overall shaped like lances, and in possession of cannons similar to his arts, with a head similar to Eunice's, heck, even the prototype armor for the pilot resembles Eunice Uroboros form. Additionally, the feature which fell in Mira along with the ganglion before humans did, also looks like this, purple but coreless and appears to be leaking some fog. Black fog? The fog? This is absurd! Can't see a damn thing! Uh, where are they? Where? Where have they gone? I can't see! Made with unknown material for Lin, Elma recognized its tech, saying it's their work, also describing it as being incomplete during the confrontation with Luxar. This missing component could be an interlink core made out of two or more people, or something else entirely. Now, this concept of an organic mech piloted by humans with an armor, hiding its true nature, reminds me of the Evas from Neon Genesis Evangelion. In this concept art, we can see that the Ares is trying to break free from its bandage-like cover, like the Evasir 1, an angel human hybrid trying to break free. Bandages, which bandages describe as having a special scent to keep them in a certain state, an eye patch to patch fissures, and a cockpit to control it through normal means, without actually interlinking, like a puppet which seeks freedom or is about to unleash its true power. It is also stated in the concept art that the ears and the ghosts are very similar. We can see these corn-like thingies, and they are purple? Some of them are humanoid or anthropomorphic, but others not, so I guess aliens can interlink them. Something similar to your world, but more flesh-like. When I was playing Xenoblade 3 for the first time and I had to fight Molius OP, I found their form to be very reminiscent of the ghost. Flesh, pointy feet, which is also present in the origin enemies, tentacles, 
and some rings or halos akin to a scale overdrive. And as they came from origin, that may explain something. That's right, it's time to address the big elephant in the room. In chapter 7, when that random piece of metal was shown, I was confused for a second. Then, in the next scene, I saw what it was, and it was explained. Two halves of an arc, which were supposed to code their very souls and world's data for its later reconstruction after total annihilation, with the dispersed energy, ether, light or however you call it. I was hyped and surprised. Not because it reminded me of the life hole in concept, but in looks, it looked like the ghost ship from Simulate X. I was thinking we were finally gonna fight those ghosts. Looking back, I still think they are the same, or at least heavily related. After rewatching the opening cutscene of Simulate X, the only appearance of ghosts in game, the part in Xenoblade 3 where the party enters through the shield or field generator, just like entering through Merkava's cannon in Gears, look at just like the metallic structure of the ghost ship beneath those purple, dark flesh, slime wings or black tar covering it. A spiral pattern that exists in both ships. If we look at these few frames before a ghost gets in the way, or in this side take. Origin has two faces. The spiral structure where the beam that was supposed to cover it from annihilation events. It is protected by an energy shield. Once the shield is down, our cruisers will create a perimeter while the fighters fly into the superstructure and attempt to knock out the main reactor. This comes from and the other with a Ferronis like head. But under this last one we can still see the same spiral pattern. Why the face though? If it is like a Pharaonis or Flame Clock, the original Pharaonis. Maybe the energy or data that is sent back to Origin or how Origin encodes the world is through this one? Either way, the ghost mothership looks identical below its flesh, but we can see from multiple takes that it's only half a sphere. Well, in some servers, there has been the discussion of Origin being inside of Mira, as it has a purple glow and would explain how Mira exists and works in the first place. More on that later. I believe these two theories can coexist. Half of Origin being in Mira, creating or managing Mira, and the other one invading worlds in space, expanding its reach, a simulation, a matrix, searching for its other half, aka the promised land? Who knows? Although this time they are divided horizontally instead of vertically, unlike how these two halves were before the fusion. As we can see, Origin is heavily inspired by Xenogears Merkaba. The spiral structure surrounded by clouds, a winged final form when Deus fuses with it, and a similar dungeon design but much more straightforward and less confusing, without random encounters, although enemies are always hostile. But according to the Geisel Ministry original plans for it, it was made with interplanetary travels in mind, while Origin was made to sustain itself in space after total annihilation, as a seed to rebuild the world. We still need to know where the purple flesh, similar to interlinked forms flesh, came from, including the creatures similar to a Mobius, Uroboros or the Origin Chimeras, where they came from, and who is in charge now, which side has the core? Well, speculation aside, returning to the divider or split topic, we are informed that Origin crashed Crash! at a certain point, and thanks to that, we got Origin metal dispersed all around the Ionios. What happened? There weren't Origin shards before this. Hence no Lucky 7 or Euroboros stones, it must be ancient, so maybe it was the result of 
of the half fusing or the effect of the expansion wave resulted after stopping time abruptly, like a car suddenly stopping its movement. Before continuing with the core and seed ideas, which will be very important when discussing Mira, let's take a detour and look at another very recognizable object slash landmark which further solidifies Sinolave Tree's role in excess lore. One of the most memorable landmarks in X is, without a doubt, the Oblivia Ring, a massive circular structure described as being used in a war between two nations by a random Nopon. By the way, Nopons live in nomad caravans in X, similar to what we saw in Sinoblade 3. Another new Xeno. Instead of established place like Frontier Village. Anyways, when running or driving to the Oblivia Desert, you are likely to have seen or noticed this structure, explore around, climb it, etc. By all means do it, as by doing this we can see things from a different angle. I am sure many have noticed, if we take a picture of it and rotate it, we can clearly see the shape of Keves Castle, a big ring structure with many layers and a smaller ring in the lower area. Similar in length, plus the presence of joints that may be where the towers used to stick from. If you go to the right spot, you can walk on the side platforms or maybe where the annihilator once stood. Now, Ionius may have disappeared, but not its data, nor the original Altamont, which could turn into the ring or into a new Keves castle where the worlds to fuse again in Ionius 2 slash Mira, which will probably happen as not only did they promise to meet each other, but in the explanation on how Ionians came to be, it is stated that the worlds yearn for each other, plus and minus, as they were one in the past. They need to reunite, or else they'll be forever incomplete. There's no conduit with infinite energy to sustain this lack of energy slash integrity from the worlds anymore. Anyways, back to Keves Castle. This early concept art is very reminiscent of the ring, with a big empty space inside, with those weird circles slash joints present in many Mira ancient structures, more on this in a while. And when Keres Castle transforms into its mech form, as if these were Sinovirs, We can see that aside from a big gear, the interior is mostly hollow, like the ring in Oblivion. When Keves castle transformed during the final fight, I was waiting for it to fall, so it could confirm X as canon. Sadly, we'll have to wait for either the DLC or whenever the Samarians leave the planet. At the dawn of the cosmos, the Samarians arrive from another planet. The Great One or the Samar Federation homeland were here. Don't you think we would have found something by now? As it is theorized by the Ganglion that it's their home planet. Other theories for before Xenoblade 3 included the ring to be just Alchemoth, to be part of one of the beamstock, which could explain the tower in Mira concept art, or the Mechonist shoulder, but the size doesn't match. The first Cineblade trailer gave us hope on seeing a ring in the desert again, although this concept art is in Erythia Sea, but the castle can fly and move between locations, kinda like Shiva from Cinegears, a flying ring city. And what happened to Shiva? That's right. And with this image in mind, Although it's not time to talk about Mira yet, I want to point out that Borat Dane's shoulder, which is next to the castle, is very reminiscent of the big mountain next to Oblivia Ring. 
This is just a speculation. Bear in mind, this is just a speculation. So, in Ionius 2 slash Mira, we need more Ardain from the Keras Castle region to fuse with Ego's Wilderness in the Fornis region. Now, I will harness this opportunity to include two smaller theories regarding the ring under the phrase same concept, different art style. First, the ring has this four circles pattern on it, seen in most of Mira Rune, hence these ruins must be related to it, and if the ring is Kebes Castle, then I think that these things are supposed to be Kebes Ephronis Hawks, metallic structures sticking out mostly in the Oblivia and Primordia region, with tubes, pipes, cables and circular joints all over it. We know Feronis hulks have been there for a while, they are almost everlasting. They have a hatch above, a tube while going up. If we were to remove the glowing light in that circular device, the platform and the stairs, I am sure their shapes would match. Now, on to the second one, what I call the sewer theory. I believe that these pipes all over Oblivia are related to the Keves Castle sewer system from which we tried to escape in chapter 4. Source, evidence, their size, proximity in most cases, the patterns on it and the fact that they carry water. Aside from that, this concept art which depicts the tubes being part of the ring, aside from that I have nothing, we have yet to see. Finally, let's talk about the world of Mira itself, how it works, its mysteries, and how Origin could be the key to it. Bored one night while studying slash procrastinating, I got the urge to check the Mira file and Google translate some stuff. What I found surprised me. I took the screenshot and then shared in Discord. I was proud. They later confirmed that a similar and better translation was done years ago in Xenomira. I may not have discovered it, but at least I feel like I reignited the interest on that particular piece of information. Mira is described as an incomplete world, with incomplete blocky terrain made out of different summoned worlds. We can see similar landscapes in Ionia, like this one, but most importantly, Summon world. Manons, who have been there a year prior to humans, and the Ganglion, who arrived there a month before the humans, described that they were engulfed by a sudden white flash slash light, hence summon, and cannot escape from the planet for some reason, not even Professor B. Like if they were trapped. Plus, they all have different anatomy, vocals and languages, yet they understand each other when they speak. One of Mira's many mysteries that left Elma intrigued. Does the planet translate thoughts? The last common language left to us. Though we inhabited separate worlds, the medium of light allowed us to communicate for the very first time. And the biggest mystery of all, how are they still alive? That is why I'm here, you'll find. If the servers, with their memories and personalities in the life hold, were destroyed long ago, where is the data stored? So as they can keep living through their memes. No! Emma states to Lin early in the game that they must be close to where the data is stored, so they don't feel the lag.
So, we have a planet made out of different worlds the data of some of its inhabitants is stored somewhere else and the servers were destroyed questions with no answer but it sounds like Ionios in theory and this is where origin functions come in handy first we see one or two moons slash celestial bodies in Sinoblade 3 depending on what these and those are so we still need three or four more worlds to make mirrors. But even aside from that, the overall terrain, its biomes, match, ergo the titans composing it. Even if Ionius is gone, it is very probable that the worlds reunite, and with this, the regions too. Maybe not in the exact way, different order and without annihilation events. Secondly, if the servers in the life vault are gone, vanished when they crashed into the planet, we know of another supercomputer which can store data. If Mira is Ionius 2, and part of Origin is still there, it could explain how and where their data went. It will be literally in the planet, below them. This story never truly ends. Furthermore, with Lao's Chimera death, for example, we see yellow particles akin to a Sinoblade 3 homecoming, and we see him in the epilogue waking up again. Although I have other ideas in the matter, more on that at the end. Anyways, moving on from extreme speculation, let's quickly look at some of the terrain in Mira and its possible connections. Primordia, the classic Xenoblade starting green area. The, the most notable similarities are the earth and rock domes, similar to the Lithurian remains in Xenoblade 3. There is even a bigger one called the Talon Rock, right in front of New LA. That could be the main body of this Titan, although we lack evidence to say that. It could be Gormoth's neck, as there are fragments of it further north as if it fell plus some pointy rocks that could be Gormod's fins, but without the crystal-like parts. Or it could be part of Bionis' head, but heavily decomposed, we have yet to see, maybe in a remake? Now, into a bigger, with more sustainable evidence, another recognizable landscape in Mira. Silvalum, which is very likely to be the remains of Uraya who has been in two Sinoblade box arts. Iconic now. What leads do we have? Well, first of all, prior to Sinoblade 3, let's look at Sinoblade 2's art book. Look at Uriah's grey rock-like arcs, abundant flora, more arcs one of the another, which are supposed to be from the interior and exterior. Ring any bells? Very reminiscent of Steel Bellum glowing trees, the scarlet aurora climate, but now with spores. We have similar bridges. In Sinoblade 3 concept art we can see there that there is a ballet at the center of Uriah remains. We didn't visit that part sadly, but we did saw Uriah tunnels, which have minerals and ores like those that Riku loves, claustrophobic tunnels like those in the Silvalum caves, and the remains of some cells similar to Bionis interior, whose music track is remixed into the Ryan tunnels. Additionally, but I'm sure, the Lutheran orbs in this sword mark concept pad and it looks like the big sport. Next, Noctilum. This one is easier. We see a jungle with massive plants, waterfalls like those that Danban spotted a while back, blue grass areas, big logs and branches, very reminiscent of magna. There are some bridges between big trees, like the ones that the Nopons constructed in magna. 
and it also looks like Magda without the buildings in that section of the sword base in the Cadencia region. There's also poisonous swamps and some lithium looking domes hidden. Aside from that, there's not much stuff to analyze. Now, with Coldros, the lava region, we might be inclined to think that it's part of more than at the first glance, due to its volcanic nature. Maybe, but in Silvate X Mira secret files, the notes on Coldros state a relation with Old Roth, a Rothian planet, describing the landscape and some temples, plus the statues and ruins don't align with anything we've seen so far. Hence this could be one of those summon worlds, plus one moon. Will the Gormati fly to a distant planet in the future and evolve? Regions match the biome seen in Simulate 3, but much more evolved, especially if we flip the map. But Ionius is no more. If the universes fuse again correctly, or at least this part, this one planet as an intersection point for universes. The resemble is noticeable. For example, I remember that by using the Cineblade X map, I made this Ionius map prediction after the first trailer by comparing the landmarks, like the distant fingertip, the sword, and Silvalum, aka Uraya. It was a close call, so I'm still inclined to think that it was intentional and the worlds will meet again. We need the worlds to meet again, not just for the emotional reunion, but because it's very likely that Uraya is Silvalum, but it's also very likely that the Oblivia Ring is Keves Castle, hence we need both parts, or the data of Ionis if it survives. And let's now look over the fact that this game and its DLC were gonna drop hints toward the future of the series. An important detail that lots of people seem to have forgotten, when Klaus pressed the funny button, his world was split in two. But before that and after that, when speaking about the conduit, he refers to multiple universes already existing, all completely unaware of each other. So, another Earth or future Earth may be out there. Our world was not the only one. Endless universes coexist, side by side, yet all completely unaware of one another. Now, we cannot talk about the world of Mira without including its fauna and the technology used by those in it. Mira and the overall world of Xenoblade X appears to be an evolution of what we've seen so far. Let's start with a very solid case, Igralith, or the Igralith species, or however you pronounce it, appears to be an evolution of Seraphic Keratina. Their shape is oddly similar, in terms of looks and attacks, which include lasers and targeted organic missiles. Although Igralith has an extra pair of arms, but most creatures in Mira are like that, and how similes are just four armed goggles. Seratina, the unique super boss in Sword March, where the sport like Lutherans were in the concept art, had big claws, tail, horns that match in shape if they were to grow. Core crystal like object and the most direct correlation it's the tripophobia like pattern on its wings. The only thing that Keratina lacks is a flower like organ in its chest. Keratina is small compared to the Igrali. Hence it's either an earlier ancestor or a juvenile Igrali. Along with the fact that Igrali are built differently. Some like the Ever Queen, lack the additional tentacles that she will have. We have the earlier mentioned Simius, the goggles of the future, with Hyredin, the territorial, continuing the high-level monkey in the starting area tradition, Rodvar's legacy. We have Servus looking like Elox, Axis's Ibiter look-alike creatures in Simulate 3 concept art, the plant-like creatures although it's kind of far-fetched, like the capivas and ovis. 
and the Turkians turning into Sultans, or this possible Leviathan ancestors. Gullus and Cantors might be related due to its multiple arms nature, similar eye sockets, and core crystal like objects all over it. We have Pipitos, more creatures with crystal as if they were lesser or smaller titans, they are still big, Aurabis looking like Ansels, and Simius, Sabulas, and the Cloud Sea King Ken, for example, share, sim share a similar biology trait, such as the beans in their sockets. And some more unlikely and disturbing ideas. <laughs> Not including the Tainted, some variation of creatures only where the Vita fell, which are controlled by a virus or possessed. They show glowing purple eyes and some fog particles. Are they... we don't know much yet. That would be for creatures. There are plenty more like Banks and Vespers. By all means, if you find more, spread the word. Anyways. Now onto the technology part. First, the Sidons and Oak Serves, automaton robots found in Mira by the Ganglions, are native from there. They remind us just a little of the Levnites, both from Keves and Agnes, especially the later ones due to their levitating nature, autonomy and laser beams. They are said to be composed of nanomachines, living metal, for their reparations but we haven't seen any of that in Steelblade 3 aside from Enos nanomachines. Maybe in the future, when both sides unite and become the Samarians? We've seen Keves and Agnus tech working together in some Lebnises. Furthermore, both Sidoms and Oak Serfs have a glowing symbol in their chest, which reminds me of the colony icons. Could that be it? We have also some small wings such as a probe easter egg, although if this is where that tech came from, it could be part of the knowledge that Elma brought to Earth. Returning to Levnices and Keves plus Agnus working together in this field, some ganglion scales known as Galdor have a very Kebesi color scheme and design, such as Saigiris Feronis while also employing Agnus tech, like levitating weapons and add-ons attached to the main body through ether chains, bluish instead of green, like that one Agnus Leibniz that Baldi modified, or similar to the Queen's Thrones Veronises, which also have big claws, like in the Rothian scales, helping with the Gormoti and Rothian case. This could be considered as a species but the Miss Laddie are described as silicon based, not unlike machines, and the design looks like a Sinoblade 1 machina, but the silicon as a skin concept made me think of the new machina and homes hybrids, like Lance and Baldi. Just a thought, maybe they too flee to a new planet? There's also the power of geometry being used by the Samarian Federation fleet at the beginning. Similar to Origin, the always elusive Granada, a Spanish weapon manufacturer, responsible for some suspicious armor with bogus core looking parts or uni Euroboros like armor. Finally, for the Rothian case, they employ Japanese style armor like those of Torna, hence Agnes, white plates in arm and leg armor, shoulders, a rope as a belt, etc. Get people stuff. And some weapons used by the ganglions resemble Agnian weapons. All that being said, what can we expect? Will we have a port? Hardly. As Takahashi stated that it will be too expensive. And the scope of things has increased. Let's not forget they stated that the Xenoblade 3 box art concept featuring Uraya and the Mechonic Sword was conceived after Xenoblade 1 and before developing Xenoblade 2. And what else was done between these two? Aha! Xenoblade X! 
we'll probably get a remake with updated art style and lore in the next gen system, plus the actual story that was cut for the online functions. We might get more connections in a Xenoblade 4 with hints towards a Xenoblade X2 on the horizon, or maybe the DLC will introduce us to this new universe, whether it's a prequel, a sequel, or something else entirely. I would like the three of them, but as Shulk said... I don't know what the future holds, but that means I can imagine the possibilities. So, if you are convinced, or you were convinced before, but needed some evidence to impress people outside, there you had some. Spread the word, Xenoblade X will be canon. Thank you very much. BS warning, BS stands for baseless speculation obviously. No evidence, just thoughts. First, Lao Chimera may have formed from Lao, but Luxor was in the mix too. As Lao saw his memories, the beast has some Luxor-like features, even though there was human DNA. If what we think of Mira is correct, his consciousness may have survived, and when Lao died, we see him disappear in yellow particles akin to a whole coming. Hence, gone. So, what if? What if? What if? Luxor is the one who wakes up in Lao's body in the epilogue and they somehow swap bodies? It would be fun. From Seth's first reveal, I saw his skin color and ears. They reminded me of Elma's true form. Is Elma part Mobius, or an evolution of this? If she came from origin with the Ares, it might be possible. Now, no way. Most importantly, Kenny Rohan? Is Consul K Kenny Rohan? This is 90% a joke. But if you think of it, he taught the value of culture and art. His iris is in the right eye so he is from the cabbage side slash universe. And he is old, unlike other Mobius. So, he must be from the city or before the old man Kenny Rohan might have been recruited by Zed or N in the city. His name starts with K. That's the only... That's the only thing I have. Mostly a joke. Unless... Ok, why does this Lepus Lebnis look like a Xenoblade X snail Nile? What is L? What is he hiding? The only inhabitant that had to learn the human language. We mostly thought of him getting some proverbs and idioms wrong as comedy relief. But, why is he the only one that doesn't use the planet's thought translation? He can't, or he doesn't want to. He describes himself as having a thirst for knowledge. And the art book show us his true form. What is this? Was he like this before? His full name is El Sirufe, literally Lucifer. Is he an AI like Seth, born from the collective consciousness? Is he in control of Mira and simply observes, like Seth? He knows about the Thelethia and such. Just who are you? No, anyways, that would be it. Special thanks to my brother Daniel, aka Danostrinu, for helping me by tracing my fake Bandam statue screenshot and give it some color. With that and the magic of Microsoft PowerPoint, I made this awesome almost 3D model looking like image. Thanks to Sword Valley for the Cinovate 3 artbook scans. And thank you, the viewer, for viewing? Thanks for enduring my terrible English slash voice. And were you convinced? Any ideas or counter arguments? What will the DLC bring? May the discussion continue on the comment section. And remember, spread the message. Xenoblade X will be canon. Nothing more than fiction. Thanks for watching.